right, America is not Babylon number six. Stephen Anderson openly denies the Jesuit control of the world. Let's watch this. First, he's in this uh, uh, Verity Bathlick cult building. And uh, his little buddy there, Jiminy Cricket, I call him. Um, listen to this. Now let's ask ourselves this question. Is Rome, Italy today ruling over the world? Is that really the seat of governance in this world? Now, some people would say, well, yeah, you know, it's the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican City, Rome. I mean, they're running everything. Now, there are people out there who have this belief that, you know, the Catholic Church is running this world and they have all the power and the Jesuits and the black pope and this and that. But I'll be honest with you, they're wrong. It's that simple. See, the Catholic Church did used to have that kind of power. In the Middle Ages, they did have that power. But honestly, today, they don't have the same power that they once had in the Dark Ages. <laughs> wow, I'm convinced. I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to quit talking about the Jesuits being bad and things like that. I'm going to, I mean, the Jesuits aren't behind anything anymore. I, the Vatican just doesn't have any power. I mean, Stephen Anderson just comes out and says, that's just wrong. Oh, huh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Uh, that that's just wrong. That's not the Jesuits. They don't have any power. I mean, let's uh, see where the next one is here. Um, this is one that he did at his own little Babylon cult building now. Hold on here. Shut up for a minute here until I can get to the spot. Um, we'll go to an hour and 20 minutes into this thing approximately and we'll hear this thing again of him openly teaching that it's not the Vatican it's not the Jesuits let's listen to this a little bit whenever I preach about this here's what people say you're wrong it's the Catholic Church you're wrong it's the Vatican but here's the thing about that though the Vatican is also inhabited by the spirit of Babylon because we see the same idolatry the same globalist ambitions the same thing because why because Rome used to be the seat of the whore in the past. So during the Roman Empire, it was Rome. But not only that, during the Middle Ages, it was still Rome because it was the Roman Catholic Church. But I'm sorry, today in 2016, the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican is not the seat of globalist power. Nor does it fit in with the description in Revelation 18 at all as being a great consumer of the world's merchandise where every shipmaster is affected. Doesn't fit. So there you have it. I mean, just the Vatican is not the seat of globalist power. I mean, it was in the, in the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages and things, but it's just not anymore. It's just not there. Never mind the fact that all the world leaders have to go and meet with the Pope. And they all have to go and bow to the Pope and things like this. And they get their marching orders from the Pope. And never mind the fact that, uh, you know, you look at governments and things and it's this guy's a Knight of Malta and that guy's a Knight of Malta and uh, Knight of Columbus here and Jesuit there and all this stuff. Never mind that, you know. I mean, let's just not talk about those things. Here we have a picture. Um, I found this kind of interesting. The pyramid structure of the uh, New World Order, essentially. You have at the top this M1 monetary thing. I'm not sure about that. What the Great, Great Jesuit Council is. Again, I don't really know much about that. Some of the papal bloodlines and things. I've heard of some of that. But then you have the Black Jesuit Order with the Black Pope there, the Vatican Corporation under them, Supreme Council, the Scottish Rite, the Order of Malta, the Knights of Malta. And this course goes over into other, you know, um, knighthoods and stuff like that. Uh, USA, you have Skull and Bones, UK, USA, you have the Pilgrim Society, Opus Dei, uh, or Opus Dei, however you want to say it, Club of Rome, Bohemian Club, Bohemian Club there. And all these different things, Council on Foreign Relations, Rockefeller, Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group. And it goes down through here. You get down into this stuff here. But uh, that one, I think, kind of describes it. But then you have, um, let me see if I can find the other thing here. You know, here you have the Jesuit power structure of the United States as of 2006. Uh, these are the different provincials. Superior General Peter Huns Kulvenbach. Uh, different provincials there. 
you know, the, the Jesuits that rule this country. Very, very, very powerful men. No power at all compared to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, they can't do a thing until they have, uh, ultimately have God's permission. They can't touch you unless God gives them permission. Okay, yeah, this is from the um, Alberto comics. I think this is a pretty good one, too. Pretty accurate. Um, it says, uh, his color is black, the color of the Jesuit order which seeks to dominate the world economy for the Antichrist through the following front organizations. The Jesuits goes down to the Illuminati, the CFR, International Bankers, the Mafia, Club of Rome, Opus Dei, Masons, New Age Movement, etc. I mean, anybody with any kind of brains is going to realize that the Vatican is in control of things. Uh, it's not that, well, they had power, but they've lost it now. Uh, yeah, I mean, and there's scores and scores and scores of pictures of, you know, presidents and things going over and bowing before the Pope. I mean, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous to come out and say these kind of things. But I want to show you another little thing here that Ander Snake says, Stephen Ander Snake, what I like to call him, um, 59 minutes into the thing, he actually says something absurd about Islam. See if I can find this real quickly. Try not to subject you to too much of this wing nut. All right, let me see if I can find this quick. We'll play it. Well, it's not Jerusalem, but it's, it's Islam. It's Mecca. I've heard that theory go. It's Mecca. Here's the thing. Is Mecca living deliciously today and just buying all the world's merchandise? And when Mecca's wiped out, they say, no man buys our merchandise anymore. Let me ask you this. Is Mecca characterized by idolatry? No, because I, Muslims don't have any idols at all. Hello? They don't make graven images. When was the last time you saw a Muslim bow down to a statue? Never. When was the last time you saw Muslims making statues and praying in front of a statue? Never. Because Muslims don't have any idolatry, whereas Babylon's characterized by great idolatry. Okay. Uh, is, is Mecca symbolized by idolatry? No, because Muslims don't have any idolatry. Okay. Uh, they venerate Mary first and foremost. Okay. There are stories of, uh, there was a Catholic uh, priest, I think, at one point in time in the history, you know, there was a, and there was a invasion, Turkish invasion or something like this. And these Muslims are coming up to invade and this priest like holds up a picture or a painting or something of the Virgin Mary and they're all like, well, Whole, you know, going down, bowing to it and stuff. But uh, they venerate Mary. But uh, what about the, the huge, big, black, you know, Kaaba stone or whatever that big, stupid thing is over there, and they're all bound to the thing and stuff like this? They don't have any idols? Excuse me? What is Allah? He's a moon god. He himself is an, an, an idol, an ancient pagan idol. Why would Stephen Anderson say that uh, the Muslims don't have any idols. Oh, probably because of the same reason that he went and, and, and wore uh, free Palestine shirts uh, to this big Islamic rally thing up there in Dearborn, Michigan. Because Stephen Anderson works with the Vatican. Works for him. I've been saying it for a long time. All he's going to do is just keep proving that I'm right. No glory to me. I just, hey, I've studied Catholicism for a long time. I have a lot of their books, a lot of their writings. I know what they believe. I know what they're trying to put forth, forth uh, to, for people to believe. Stephen Anderson's working for them. As is anybody else that's working for this uh, uh, Babylon USA documentary thing. Watch out for these people.